Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Izzy T from PowerliftingWin.com, and today we're going to talk about powerlifting leverages. So a lot of times you'll hear more experienced lifters say things like, wow, that guy has great leverages for deadlifting. And it's interesting to know really how much goes behind a statement like that, because it seems simple, but it's actually can be quite complicated. And, you know, eventually you figure out that what they're really talking about is they're saying that guy has long arms. That's basically what that's code for. But leverages affect every single lift in powerlifting in really unique ways. And I want to get to the basis of some of that in this video and kind of help you understand it a little bit better. So if you take a look at this picture here of two world record holders, both in their own right, on the left you have Blaine Sumner, on the right you have Eric Lillybridge. Now, what you may notice is that these two guys, their squat form looks nothing alike. Sumner is far more bent over in the hole, and you have Lily Ridge who's far more upright. Now, is this a technique issue? Is Blaine messing up because he's leaned over more? Or should Eric be leaning over more? In reality, it doesn't really have anything to do with their technique. It has more to do with their anthropometry, their body length segments. Because you can see Blaine over there, he has a short torso with longer legs relative to his torso. And Eric is the exact opposite with a longer torso relative to his legs. And what this does is it changes their power lifting leverages by uh, changing the position of their joints relative to the bar. So let's talk about how we can understand this leverage better. What a lot of people don't know, or at least don't seem to talk about, is that you can actually quantify and measure the leverage on a given lift by using uh, a moment arm analysis. A moment moment force is basically the force that tends to cause rotation about an axis. So you have a picture of a wrench here, right? That's what moment is. It causes rotation about an axis. And the actual amount of force th that that uh, moment represents can be measured by the moment arm. The distance between the point that is rotating and the point that is applying that force. So in barbell training or in power lifting, the pivot point is, you know, our knees and our hips. And the point of force application is actually the barbell itself. I think this is one of the best pictures I've ever seen that really explains this concept. The longer the moment arm is, the more difficult it's going to be to handle the weight regardless of how much is on the bar. So you can see there's four plates on the bar in every single one of these pictures, but that last picture is clearly way harder than the first one because the leverage that he's working against is so much greater. And in every single lift, we have these same leverage points that we're looking at, and our body structure determines the length of these moment arms. So let's take a look at a squat and see what the relevant moment arms are in the squat. Okay, so as you can see here, that big gray dot represents the bar, and the red line is the point at which gravity is pulling down on the bar. Gravity operates in a straight line. So that is the point of force application, right? The hand on the wrench. Now these white dots represent the pivot points on the body, and that is the hip capsule and the knee. And the distance between these two joints measured at a 90 degree angle is the length of the relevant moment arm. So you can see there's a, a smaller moment arm between the knee and the bar and a larger moment arm between the hip and the bar. Now, if you have a longer leg, you're going to notice that that moment arm is going to be on the hip or towards the knee. Both of those are going to get longer and the back angle is going to be more leaned over. So now what I want to show you is an actual example of what this looks like on a real lift. So we're going to look at a deadlift and how arm length affects the deadlift leverages. Okay, this is a bit of a complicated picture, so stick here with me and I'll explain each thing one by one, each item, you know, piece by piece. So on the left, we have a guy who has longer arms and on, a, on the right, we have a guy who has shorter arms. And this is going to affect their leverages because of a whole lot of things. But first, we're going to keep on the subject of moment arms. So I want you to notice the guy on the left. The distance between his hip and that point of force application known as gravity. Now look at the guy on the right and notice the distance between his hip and the bar. And I posted down there at the bottom of the screen the actual length of each of those blue bars, which represent the moment arms. And you can see that not only is having shorter arms going to make this guy's range of motion longer, it's 
also increasing the distance between the hips and the bar. And remember, from that picture we saw of the guy trying to hold up the, the barbell that was really far away from him, the longer those moment arms get, the harder it is to actually do the lift despite the exact same amount of weight being on the bar. So we've already got two major disadvantages for short-armed guy over here, right? He's going to have a longer range of motion on both ends. It's gonna, he's going to be starting at a deficit, and he's going to have a higher lockout than the guy on the left. But there's some other things that are going on here as well. If you notice these green lines at the knees and the hips, you can see that the guy on the left has both a more open hip angle and a more open knee angle. Why is that important? The more open a joint angle is, the more advantageous position that it's in. I mean, for example, what can you do more on? The quarter squat, the half squat, or the full squat? It's obviously the quarter squat, right? Because the joint is mechanically more efficient the more open that it is. So not only does the guy on the left have a shorter range of motion, a smaller moment arm, but now he's got his joints in a more efficient position as well, right? And it doesn't stop there because because of his more open hip angle and longer arms, he's also got a steeper back angle. And the more horizontal your back angle is, the more isometric force is required to stabilize the spine, meaning it's simply harder to keep your back flat. So this guy on the left, from one simple leverage advantage being long arms, has got so much going on for him that it's, you know, it's a it's not even much of a comparison between the two guys. The guy on the left is going to smoke him, right? And this is the stuff that people are talking about when they're talking about deadlift leverages, right? It's going to longer arms going to cut down your range of motion. It's going to cut down the moment arm. It's going to cut down that leverage, right? It's going to give you a more open back angle, a more open hip angle and a more open knee angle. If you guys enjoy this type of analysis of powerlifting and, and barbell training, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of Starting Strength. I'm actually a Starting Strength certified coach myself, and most of everything that I at least started off learning about lifting from was from Mark Ripito and the Starting Strength model. And what I can tell you guys is this, if the whole concept of, of leverages and how to manipulate leverages and the actual biomechanics behind the lifts is something that you're interested in, it's something that you want to learn about to help you increase your performance as a power lifter, I really cannot recommend this book enough. This book is going to give you the, the framework that you need in terms of the physics and the mechanics to actually analyze what is happening leverage-wise and muscularly in all of the different lifts. It's going to give you the tools that you need to manipulate your own leverages to create your own techniques that are best suited for your anthropometry, your segment lengths. Um, overall, it's just one of the, the better pieces of strength literature out there. I highly recommend it. I personally think that if you don't understand the biomechanics behind the lifts, you'll never fulfill your potential as a lifter. So if you're interested, please get Rip's book. Support him. He's a great guy. It's a great product. If you guys want a more thorough explanation of some of the topics covered in this video and really how to apply them to your own techniques and how to pick the best techniques, how to really optimize your technique using leverage concepts, using scientific principles to lift the most weight, I'm going to put a link in the description box to an article that I just wrote on this very topic and I highly recommend that you check that out if, you know, if this was something that you found, found that you wanted to learn more about. If you guys enjoy my content, please subscribe. I put out new videos almost every single day. And if you're looking for anything related to powerlifting, check out www.powerliftingtowin.com as I guarantee you there'll be a new article up there every single day. Hope that was helpful. Have a good one, guys.